What's up, people? It's your man, Urban Lover, once again, coming from your mama's basement. She didn't cook me no food, so I'm going to keep dropping these series on you because her brother is hungry. So with that being said, I'm going to jump back into free agent series. And this one, I'm going to try to do a, um, a double combo, some Mortal Kombat type of flow. Um, anyway, I'm going to get right into it. We're going to start with Ty Lawson. Um, the CS analyst got broken down. I like to say, Sir. so much potential squandered. Ty Lawson turned 29 next season. This should be his prime. But he's throwing away so much, he couldn't stay out of trouble for DUIs in Denver and help contribute to his immaturity issues. He arrived in Houston as a piece that was supposed to put them over the top and instead wound up out of the rotation within a month. He eventually landed in Indiana where he was just an end of the bench guy. There's still a player in there who can shoot, pass, get to the rim, weave in and out of transition, make plays and dazzle crowd. But Lawson hasn't committed himself and work ethic or mental approach. He has to earn those minutes back. That said, Lawson is downright insane value. If you think you can reach him or if he really shows that he has passed his issues, he's very much worth signing on a fly. All right, and they say good fit, Oklahoma City, Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn, Atlanta, and Portland. Now, with that being said, um, Brooklyn is definitely in need of a point guard. Um, I got two other guys that I'm going to talk about. So we got Portland. He could definitely be a fit of Atlanta as a backup. Um, come in behind Stroder because they just gave up um, – one of the other point guards, so it'd still be kind of good for them to, you know, to have a backup. Um, with that being said, you got uh, the Milwaukee Bucks that are looking at him, the Utah Jazz. Um, the Pacers might resign him, but they're also looking at Eric Gordon, so it all depends with that situation. Milwaukee definitely need a point guard. Um, I can see him or Rondo going in that direction, um, but it depends on, you know, um, Jason Kidd, you know, what he decides to do. Um, Utah can definitely use a backup. Now that they got Hill, I mean, it would be beneficiary for them to have a nice little backup that can run the tempo. So Ty Lawson, I mean, like I said, the whole thing about Ty Lawson is he, if he get himself together, he could be a, a, a big um, help coming off the bench. But the whole point is that, you know, he got to you know get over his um, off-the-court issues. Once he get over his off-the-court issues and play like he really wants to be in the NBA, then we might see the Ty Lawson old. But time is ticking on you, brother. Make up your mind. So I'm that, And that's my thing with Ty Lawson. I'm hoping that, like I said, I'm hoping that, you know, the dude get it together, and, you know, he can come back and be, you know, a star once again. Now we'll go to Brandon Jennings. Now, the analyst got broken out like this. Brandon Jennings' talent is higher than a lot of guys on this list, but it's mitigated by two factors. One, his Achilles injury, which is always difficult for a player, especially a guard, to bounce back from. And two, the fact that he's likely to wind up as a high price due to his age. He's 27 years old. A name value. Jennings has come a long way over the last few years. Learn how to run a team and be more of a distributor. His defense isn't notably bad, and he has nights of pure burst, especially if he can get back to where he was two years ago or close to it. However, he never shot better than 41% from the field, never averaged more than eight assists per game, and his three-point shooting has always been decent to good but never ph uh, phenomenal. That said, Jenny could still be a steal, but low, buy low on him after injury. Watch as he mature and recover from injury and get, as, get at the worst a very capable scoring backup. And he's a good fit, Philadelphia, New York, Brooklyn, Houston, Los Angeles, Clippers, and Portland. Now, he, like I said, um, right now, him and Rondo so mutual interest for uh, um, the, uh, new, um, the uh, Brooklyn Nets. And the Brooklyn Nets are looking at both of them as well. Um, now, the thing about uh, him is that also you got the Nets and Chicago, like the two biggest teams that are looking at him. Chicago definitely need a point guard. Um, Orlando basically not going to resign him because they got the guy Alfred Payton, Payton and they're going to go ahead along with him. And let him roll. Um, I think they let uh, uh, Ola Depot, whatever his name is, they, they released. Well, they traded him to um, OKC. So, with that being said, um, right now Chicago and the Nets are the two biggest teams that are actually looking at him. Um, Philadelphia definitely could use a point guard, but you know, do they really want to go with this guy based on the fact of his pre-injuries? I mean, he could be an addition off the bench. You know, what I mean, you probably can get it for cheap, and he can be a good um, semi-veteran to some of the younger guys. I mean, he's still young himself too. New York can use him off the bench as well. Um, Houston definitely use him off the bench. Um, the Clippers can definitely use him off the bench if Austin, Austin Rivers signed with somebody else. And Portland can use him off the bench. So there's a couple teams that, you know, that can use him. But like I said, the main two teams that are really looking at him right now are the Brooklyn Nets and the Chicago Bulls. Both of them teams are in desperate need of a point guard. Now, will Brandon Jennings fit the bill? We don't know. We don't know what Brandon Jennings we're going to get. We just hope that we get the Brandon Jennings before he was injured. If we get that Brandon Jennings, then I would love to see him play once again, especially when he was starting to get into his own in Detroit. And he did pretty good at Milwaukee. So I'd love to see him, you know, get his thing off again. Now, we're going to go to uh, Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon, um, he's 27 years old. 
and analysts got broken out like this. They say, Eric Gordon was once the most promising two guard under 25 in the league, but injuries robbed him as essentially his entire career. Now 27, Gordon has played more than 64 games since his rookie season. You just can't have any faith he's going to make it through a full year. That said, he's still a great shooter. 38% for his career from beyond the arc and can operate as a combo guard. He's worth a gamble in the short term. Big money deal because he's capable of turning a huge scoring performance if he ever gets his body right. New Orleans was just never a fit for him. He would be way higher on this list if it weren't for the injury, which we all know. And they say good fit Memphis, Philadelphia, Indiana, New York, Phoenix, Atlanta. Memphis definitely needed two. So it would be nice for him to get him because, you know, if he can stay healthy, I will gamble. If I was Memphis, I would gamble on him because at the end of the day, you got all the other guys that's getting kind of old. I'm Allen, all them. You got to bring in some youth in there eventually. Um, Philadelphia definitely can use it too. Um, they big high on, on Deion Waiters. Um, well, I don't know if they're going to still pursue him, but I was thinking Deion Waiters might go to Philadelphia, but you never know. Um, they can definitely use him. Indiana is real big on him. Indiana is like one of the teams that actually trying to get him. Right now, the Pacers, the Knicks, and the Wolves are the three main teams that are actually looking at Eric Gordon. The Pacers are real high on him, but the thing is that, you know, you got two other guards. You got Stuckley. And, um, um, what's the other guy they just picked up? You got Stuckley and you got, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, golly, I forgot his name from Atlanta. Um, they just picked him up. Man. Can't even think of his name. He'll probably come to me once I um, finish this video. It always happens. That's what happens when you drink wine and try to make a video. But anyway, you got him, Stuckley. And the guy from Atlanta just got. And that right there is going to be kind of hard for him to actually get, you know, playing time. But keep in mind, he is from Indiana, you know, the Hoosers and all that. So will he go to Indiana? It, it depends. I mean, even with the Knicks, the Knicks can use a two-guard. The Knicks definitely want a two. But the only thing about it is that you got two injured uh, backcourts with Derrick Rose and Eric Gordon. So it will be kind of crazy. So I don't know. But the Knicks are high up on him. And the Wolves definitely would like to get him. I guess they probably want to bring him off the bench. Um, now, uh, also on top of that, um, you got – Phoenix that's looking at, I don't know why Phoenix, Phoenix got like 20 guards. In Atlanta, Atlanta, I guess they're looking at it if it's more like if they don't get Ken Bazemore back, you know, they can actually go ahead and try to grab him. So right now, my whole thing is that I hope that Eric Gordon, you know, can get over the, the hump of being healthy or, or, you know, and stay away from the injuries because this guy can ball. I mean, if you actually watch him play, the dude can shoot. The dude can knock it down. Dude at one point in time was shooting 40-something percent behind the three-point arc. He can definitely shoot, and he got a nice little floater. And he will fit any team as a backup. And right now, at this point, he got to redeem his, his career. So right now, a lot of teams can actually get him either as a starter or as a bench player, and they probably had to pay so much for him, which would be good for a lot of teams that's trying to, you know, fix their bench or also for players that's trying to look for a, a star role player. So, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, it's all about if Aaron Gordon can stay healthy. If Gordon can stay healthy, it would be very beneficial for him. Now the last person, um, there's not, he's not, he didn't even make the um, the, the top 50 free agent. And I'm kind of upset, you know. I really like them too, and I'm talking about over the Rajah Rondo. Now Rajah Rondo did pretty good in Sacramento. You know he had a lot of um, a lot of stinks with um, Boston, Dallas. You know about what happened to him in those certain teams. But you know he always butt head with the coaches. I think going to Sacramento kind of made him more to understand. Like listen, you know you only get one crack at this. A lot of teams are not jumping at Rajah because um, Rajah because they're not. I mean, they're looking at his defense. Like the biggest thing about Rajah is this: he did shoot 36% behind the arc, which is good. He got that up. He averaged six rebounds and two steals, 11 points, 11 assists. He led the league in assists. His biggest problem is actually is just his defense. Um, he actually became a mentor um, to um, um, Boogie Cousins. You know, he would talk to Boogie Cousins because he understood when. Um, how, how it's feel, you know, to be in that situation because at one point in time he was just like that. And he said being, you know, being with Paul Pierce and all of them taught him a valuable lesson of how to be more, you know, be more mature about the game and, you know, as a role, role model to some of the younger players. So he, you know, right now the teams that are actually looking at him is um, the Nets, the Kings, the Kings. Now the Kings at one point in time, now the Vox said that he would love to have him back, but they said they weren't going to try to like go into a, a bidding war with any team that's going to try to get him. But with Collison having the uh, the, the um the on off the court problem, and they're not really drafting nobody in the first round as a, you know for a point, and they got somebody in the second round, um, um the, the dude Cousins. The thing is now, do you resign Roger Rondo? The only thing I see about it is David Georgia, who used to be the coach at uh, Memphis, he ran a slow pace type of offense. Does Rondo fit that offense? Because if he runs a slow pace offense, um, Rondo would like to get out and run. That's what he's most most better at when he's out running. So he can basically set up the offense the way he likes it. 
So do he goes back there? He said he would like to go back there. But at the end of the day, he's still going to try to see where the team's going to offer more money. Now, New York, he wanted to go to New York, but they went and got Derrick Rose. They weren't too big on uh, Rondo. Actually, um, Carmelo Anthony wanted Rondo to come out there. But they decided to go with Derrick Rose. Um, now, now the Brooklyn Nets are interested in him and Brandon Jenkins. And they both, both of them guys are showing interest, mutual interest in the Brooklyn Nets as well. Now, the thing is, Rondo going to go wherever the money at. I'm just being honest with y'all. I mean, yeah, he, Sacramento was cool and all, but he's right now 30 years old. He's looking for a, 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 a four, year, four to five-year contract that's going to pay him so that way he can retire, at least with a, a substantial amount of money. He already run a championship, you know what I mean? So it's not like it's something that he doesn't He, you know, he, it's not like something that he doesn't need. I mean, sure, he want to be on the championship team, but at the same time, he want to be the star of his team, and he want to be at the opportunity to make money. So at the end of the day, I can see Brooklyn Nets actually getting him, only on the strength that Sacramento's not going to pay him that much money. Um, the Bucks also are looking at him, too. But the only reason why I can see the Bucks jump down because Jason Kidd is almost similar to, like, Ron, Ron, Rondo. Almost similar. So I can see the Bucks jumping at him, too. But I can see him more going towards the Brooklyn Nets. And right now, like I said, the Nets, the Kings, the Nets and the Kings are, like, the two highest um, teams that's actually looking forward to him. So I'm looking at him going to the Nets. I mean, the Kings, I mean, I, I don't know, man. They might wind up getting somebody else, but they definitely need a point guard. So we'll see. I mean, what, what, whatever holds, but that's how I got Rondo. I'm thinking, like, he will go with the Nets. Um, with that being said, it's your man Urban Lover. Like, share, subscribe. Get in the comment section. Tell me what you think, where you think some of these players are going to go. Um, I'd like to hear what some of you guys got to say. With that being said, much love to y'all guys. Be safe out there. I'm out.